Now what I've done here is I've drawn you a sketch of what we're given and to be honest to do this problem you don't really need a sketch but uh, just thought I'd give it to you so that you can have an appreciation of what's going on. Essentially then we've got this ball of mass 0.5 kilograms it's moving with a velocity of 12i meters per second. I've set up unit vectors i horizontally and j upwards. It's not drawn to scale but uh, essentially we've got the ball then moving with a velocity of 12i meters per second to the right here and it's struck by a bat and the impulse received by the ball is minus 4i plus 7j newton seconds. And so if we model the ball as a particle, what we've got to do first of all is find the speed of the ball immediately after the impact. Well, I think it's pretty obvious that when you hit the ball, it's going to move off in some direction, something like this afterwards. And we're going to try and find out what that velocity vector is. We'll call it V. And then we're going to get the magnitude of it and that will give us its speed. Okay, so to do this, we've got to be familiar with the fact that impulse equals change in momentum. Okay, I'll just write that down for you. The impulse, and we'll call it I, as I've done over here. Impulse I, and it's a vector quantity, so I'll just put a squiggle underneath it, is equal to change in momentum. In other words, mv minus mu. And both velocity, final velocity, and initial velocity are vector quantities. And so we could write this out in column vector form. I find it generally a lot easier. So we've got i, which we know is minus 4 and then 7. And that equals the mass m, which is 0 0.5. Just write that as a half, I think. And then times the final velocity, v, which we're trying to work out, minus half again for m, times the initial velocity. And the initial velocity was just 12i, or simply 12 zero. And what can we do next? Well, we could add this vector to both sides. This vector is minus six zero. So if you add that to both sides, you're gonna get a half v equals minus four seven added to six zero. And if we do that, we therefore have half V equals, well minus four add six is two, and seven and zero is seven. And if we double this times both sides by two, it follows that V as a vector equals four fourteen. Okay, four I plus fourteen J. So when we look at the vector that we've got over here for V, we know that we're going four units in that direction to 14 units up. Let's just mark that in. So we've got four units that way to 14 that way. So when it comes to working out the speed then, I've just got to get the magnitude and that's just going to be found by Pythagoras' theorem. So we've got the magnitude of V, can write it like this actually, magnitude of v, okay, we'll put speed, speed equals magnitude of v, which in turn equals then the square root of 4 squared plus 14 squared. And if you work that out, you find you get the square root of 212, which is 14.5602 and so on. And when rounded, that's going to be 15.6 meters per second. I'm going to give that to three significant figures, 3SF. All right. Okay, well, that's the first part of uh, the question, part A. Then the next part, B, we're asked to find the angle in degrees between the velocity of the ball, okay, immediately after the impact and the vector i. So in other words, well, i is horizontal, and this is the direction it's now going, so we're after this angle in here. We'll call it theta. So for part B, bring it over here, very easy, just basic trigonometry from this right angle triangle. We've got the opposite side, we've got the adjacent, so that's going to be the tan. Tan of the angle theta, 
then equals 14 over 4. So to get theta, you've just got to do the inverse tan of both sides. So it'd be the inverse tan of 14 over 4. And when you use your calculator, just make sure you're in degrees mode in case you were doing some radian stuff in an earlier set of questions. You get 74.054 and so on degrees. And let's say we round this to three significant figures. That's going to be 74.1 degrees to 3SF. Okay? So that's B. Now in part C, let's just come down here. For part C, we've got to work out the change in kinetic energy by the ball as a result of the impact. Well, the change in kinetic energy, let's just put it in here, is going to be the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So the change in Ke is going to equal the final kinetic energy. And remember, kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So it's going to be a half of the mass, which we know is a half, times v squared. Well, v squared would be basically this value here, squared, 14.5602 squared. Well, it gives you exactly 212 because that's what this comes to when you come to square root it. So you could write in here just simply 212. So that's the final kinetic energy. Now we've got minus the initial kinetic energy, half m, m being a half again, times v squared. Well, it was moving with a speed of 12 units, okay, to the right initially. So this is going to be 12 squared. Okay, so if you work this out, you should find you get exactly 17. And the units would be joules, 17 joules then. Okay, so I hope that's been okay for you. And uh, that brings us now to the end of this question.